This video is about sinusoidal graphs. These are functions that could be modeled by sine or cosine. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.4 and 3.5. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. Number 1. The sinusoidal function f of theta is shown in the figure above. Find the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline for the graph of f of theta. The period is the horizontal length of one cycle. Here's one cycle highlighted. It goes from 0 to pi, so the period is pi. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period, so that will be 1 over pi. The midline is the horizontal line passing halfway between the highest value and the lowest value. So it's pretty easy to see that in this case, it will be y equals 10. A horizontal line is always y equals something, so make sure you write y equals 10 and not just 10. You can also think of the midline as y equals the average of the highest value and the lowest value. So in this case, 30 plus negative 10 divided by 2. But 30 minus 10 is 20, so this is y equals 20 divided by 2, or y equals 10. The amplitude is the highest value minus the midline. In this case, 30 minus 10, which is 20. Let's do the same thing for number 2. I've highlighted one cycle of the function. It goes from 0 to 4, so the period is 4. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period, so that will be 1 over 4. The midline is the horizontal line halfway between the highest values and the lowest values. In this case, the midline is y equals 1. You can also find the midline by taking the average of the highest value and the lowest value. So 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. This is 4 minus 2, which is 2 divided by 2, so we get y equals 1. Don't forget the y equals in front for the midline. The amplitude is the difference between the highest value and the midline. So 4 minus 1, which is 3. The amplitude is always positive. For the next few problems, we are given the description of a function, but not an actual graph. I need to do a quick side lesson using the graph from number 2. Notice that the period measured from peak to peak, in this case, is 4. Now notice that the horizontal distance between the max and the next min is half the period. For this function, the input values are theta. So the horizontal distance between the minimum value and the maximum value is theta min minus theta max. Like in this case, theta min is 3, and theta max is 1. Since the horizontal distance between consecutive max and min is half the period, if you double the horizontal distance, it will equal the period. So the period will be given by 2 times theta max minus theta min. That's double the horizontal distance between consecutive max and min. This could sometimes be theta max minus theta min. It's always just going to be the second value minus the first value, the big value minus the small value. Or if you put an absolute value around the horizontal distance, then the order doesn't matter. The bottom line is that the period can be found by doubling the horizontal distance between consecutive max and min. Number three, the sinusoidal function h of theta has a maximum at the point 3 comma 15. The first minimum after reaching this maximum value occurs at the point 8 comma 3. Find the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline for the graph of h of theta. We are given consecutive max and min. The horizontal distance between max and min will be 8 
minus 3, the difference in the input values. If you double this horizontal distance, you get the period. So in this case, the period is 2 times 5, or 10. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period, so that will be 1 over 10. The midline will be y equals the average of the highest output value and the lowest output value. So 15 plus 3 divided by 2. That's y equals 18 over 2, which is y equals 9. For the midline, make sure you include the y equals in the front. The amplitude is the difference between the maximum value and the midline. In this case, 15 minus 9, which is 6. Number 4. The sinusoidal function k of theta has a minimum at the point pi over 2 comma negative 1. The first maximum after reaching this minimum value occurs at the point pi comma 7. Find the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline for the graph of k of theta. We can find the period by doubling the horizontal distance between consecutive max and min. The horizontal distance is going to be pi minus pi over 2. So the period will be 2 times pi over 2. The 2's cancel out and we are left with just pi. The frequency is the reciprocal of the period, which is 1 over pi. The midline will be y equals the average of the max and the min. So negative 1 plus 7 divided by 2. That's 6 over 2, or y equals 3. The amplitude is the difference between the maximum value and the midline. So 7 minus 3, or 4. Use the graph of the sinusoidal function f of theta to answer problems 5 through 7. Number 5. Which of the following best describes the behavior of f over the interval from 0 to pi over 2? Is f increasing or decreasing? And is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? I have highlighted the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Is f increasing or decreasing? It's clearly increasing. The output values are rising from left to right. So increasing. We have learned that if f is concave up, the rate of change is increasing. And if f is concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. On this interval, f is concave down, so the rate of change is decreasing. In other words, f is increasing at a decreasing rate, so the answer is b. Number 6. Which of the following best describes the behavior of f over the interval from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2? Is f positive or negative? And is f increasing or decreasing? I've highlighted the interval from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. First, is f positive or negative on this interval? Notice that all of the output values are above the x-axis. Therefore, f is positive on this interval. Or you could say, look, all the output values are between 0 and 2 on this interval. So f is positive. Next, is f increasing or decreasing on this interval? It's clearly decreasing. The output values are falling as we move from left to right. So let me get this straight. On this interval, f is positive and decreasing. So the answer is B. Number 7. Which of the following best describes the rate of change of f over the interval from pi to 3 pi over 2. So we are talking about the rate of change of f, not just f. Is the rate of change positive or negative? 
and is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? At times like this, I like to break out this chart that I've been trying to get you guys to memorize since Unit 1. It shows the graphical relationships between F, the rate of change of F, and even the rate of change of the rate of change. To decide if the rate of change is positive or negative, we look at the chart and see that the rate of change will be positive where F is increasing, and negative wherever F is decreasing. On the interval from pi to 3 pi over 2, F is clearly decreasing. Therefore, the rate of change is negative. Now, is the rate of change increasing or decreasing? The rate of change will be increasing wherever F is concave up, and the rate of change will be decreasing wherever F is concave down. Since F is concave up on this interval, the rate of change is increasing. So let's put it together. The rate of change of F is negative and increasing from pi to 3 pi over 2. So the answer is C. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.